when we talk about scaling pipe drive, what would you say were the biggest breaking points where you had to level up your game, where you had to become a better leader, where you had to become better in, let's say, revenue operations and all the different parts? What were At what points did you as founders have the feeling of, okay, holy crap, we have to level up our game? Mm -hmm. I think that one of the things that we learned that we was happy is that we had very humble team was that we never cared about titles and uh, and we agreed from the beginning that we need to wear any hat to make it done you know and uh, maybe the first moment was like um, one of the best moments was when we hired uh, the guy to leading our engineering because one moment, uh, you know, like if you, you can have great, like, you know, talent, but if you have to scale, you need to be sure that everybody is still super effective. It's easy when you have two, three people, you know, if you have 15, so you need to have some processes. And, and luckily we had one advisor who was, uh, had Skype background and he basically had been working, scaling many tech teams. And one moment he looked at guys like, you just unbelievably good but i feel that you will start to have problems now if you grow like 15 20 25 especially in the engineering and we took effort and managed to hire someone which basically and 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 the guy said like look around and i said okay i know the guy who was that moment working in skype he was head of a microsoft client and let me remind microsoft bought skype so the most important product they had was that one. And uh, I showed that I have met this guy. He's amazing. What do you think? He said, yeah, but you would never hire this guy. I said, why? Because he is the key player in Skype. It was like, okay. And he promised to, uh, to uh, uh, he promised if we hire him, he would eat his hat, black and white. He hasn't eaten that yet, sadly. And literally I met this guy and, and it took us three months and he had two offers, which is crazy also. He had our offer to being VP of engineering and he had Vice, transfer Vice that moment. And he picked us. And this was so important and why? Because he was so senior and so smart and fit with us that they believe his impact was pretty similar like founders had. He actually, uh, and even he spent in company same time of the, of the thing. So this was one of the final moments that you need to find way how to hire people which is so much smarter than you and put them to the freedom. And oh boy, like it it's just like in engineering, luckily because of that, we basically managed to grow without huge hassles, which is a great thing to have. The other thing, what I think that we wasn't good, being very honest, we humble people, you know, we go to the... We, we, we was going to the US and I think that many hires we made in US didn't work out so well. And um, I believe that nowadays I am more like looking that if you go and hire someone who has very good uh, LinkedIn profile, you just need to so deeply understand, is this person good in your culture and in your setup? The fact that somebody worked in Google would not work for you, most likely. It's just too big and, you know, too big culture and so on. But yeah, I think that the, one percent and second one, one moment, I think that which hit the really back was like, uh, I think it was a year later on so that we, we basically had one signed term sheet with amazing VC. And, uh, and usually if you have term sheet, this means there is already a huge amount of due diligence done because you don't uh, sign term sheet just for the fun. Usually term sheet, in my experience, is like 90% deal is done. You're just like, okay, here have lawyers, let's let's uh, talk about the small things. After months, we see cancelled term sheet. Why? Because he looked our data and said, guys, your churn is so high that your business will not survive. I mean, it was like, oh my God, what we did wrong. And we, we back bank and, and made an, all of the analysis and later understood that, yes, we didn't address this correctly. So you need to analyze your data bigger and bigger. 
But second, we also understood that we didn't show the data correctly for him because so many SaaS companies are growing by the sales team and then the churn can decide your basically the destiny because you just fundraise and you just put more to the marketing growth and so on. In that stage, we still was half the new clients was through the word of mouth. And then you can lose because your word of mouth usually costs much, much, much less. There was only a few companies around uh, that moment. There was SurveyMonkey who, who had similar recruiting. So that was our thing that how important is basically the numbers and financial leading because from the B round and even A round, it will end up Excel analytics. Like beside usual things, who is the founder, what's the cap table, you know, but still it will show your financial models. So you need to be sure that one moment you have somebody in a team who is so good on that. And usually if you're not from financial itself, you, you are not putting first effort to that. Do you still know just as a reference, what kind of, or how, how large the number of churn was in percent? Yeah. Yeah. I think that the monthly churn was somewhere like 2.5, 3%. And if you, if you calculate it, this means that at lifetime value is uh, three years less. But the problem was that if it's, if it would be sales driven, then it's very bad because you, you're, uh, it's going down. So, um, yeah. And, but the, the funny thing is that what people don't usually believe in first eight years, we didn't had like first seven, eight years, we, we didn't had a uh, sales team. Like we started to experiment it, but, but it took us a while before we go, like, okay, now we're ready for the sales team. So you completely, completely work with product and growth? Yeah, I am still loving that one. I do need to be clear. There are areas when you cannot work without sales. It's just, come on, we, we are building that tool. But if you have very low, if your ticket price is low, like for example, PyTribe started like um, in the case that you can pay us $25 per month, which means that the annual is like 300 plus or minus. And you know, lifetime value is in thousand. You just cannot, you cannot basically show sales uh, behind of that. And what happens, what we also learned that so many of our competitors in CRM was going immediately to the, to the enterprise. And we didn't, we, we didn't want to do that. And that was the difference. Sir. We stayed in this, uh, basically SMB area, which we, we moved more to the mid market. But, and, but so many West Bam immediately going to enterprise. And if you do scaling too fast, it can break you. And we had the strength to say no to the uh, many people who recommended that. And we just seriously like that area much more than going enterprise because this needs different product. And also maybe the one thing in the early days, which I'm proud that think about, I think that we was, we literally had 2000, uh, all right euros revenue monthly and we had meeting with one client who said loving your product i would want to pay like annually twenty five thousand. think about it. it just immediately moves your needle and upfront by the way we have no one basically all the founders are getting like less than thousand per month and you know and everybody's struggling you know we had horror stories that my co-founder timo bank took his cars car away because he didn't already pay three months for that and even switched off the gas and all of just unbelievable bad stories. And then we're talking and looking like our bank accounts and the thing and, you know, and say like, oh, no, we say no to this client. And why? He, he said yes, but he wanted to have different product. He wanted to have this in his server. And it would take us like totally off the track and we would not be scalable like that. And I believe it was, <laughs> it was this fundamental, what we didn't want to build. And that moment, make decision and say no to the significant amount of cash was just so painful, but long-term it paid off.